Welcome back. You're watching us here on Halftime Report. Uh, as we move forward, just keep an eye on a couple of these stocks which are recovering from the lows. We have Tata Consumer, which has moved to the high point of trade. Remember, for most part of uh, the first uh, half of today's trading session, we've seen the FMCG stock see some profit booking. But uh, Tata Consumer is the one that has bucked the trend. The other one that's doing well is uh, Bharti Airtel 2. Also, just keep an eye out on the Adani Group stocks because now they're moving off lows swiftly. And when they move, they move in a pack. So Adani Enterprises and Adani Ports, both of them from the lows, have moved to the high point of trade. They've recovered about a percent, percent and a half. Uh, let's talk about earnings then. We have uh, the management of Lemon Tree Hotels joining in. It was a decent performance in uh, this uh, the second quarter. The margins were lower, largely because of what the company had told us with regards to their pre-operative expenses for the Mumbai business and them renovating some parts of their portfolio. Patanjali Keswani, who is the chairman and managing director of the company, joins us now. Thanks a lot, Mr. Keswani. Thank you for joining in. Wish you and your team a very happy Diwali. Um, could you tell us, adjusted for these reven renovation expenses and the Mumbai Orica pre-operative expenses, what were your margins in the second quarter and what's sustainable? They were 47.4%. All right, 47.4%. And uh, the occupancy, what do you expect it to be in the third quarter? In Q3, it will be, I would reckon, uh, closer to 75%, excluding Orica Mile. Orica Bombay will be obviously a new hotel. So that would do probably an occupancy of north of 30%. And uh, if I adjust for that, because that is uh, 11 or uh, 13% of our inventory. So that will reduce it to in the late 60s as an aggregate. Okay, sure. Um, can you tell us, uh, Mr. Keswani, how exactly will you split growth in the future between your average revenue per room as well as occupancies? So in some, uh, you see, we are renovating a lot of our hotels, uh, wherever we think we have an ability to reprice. So basically, once we bring build occupancy back to about 75, 76%, which I think should happen by Q4, uh, again, excluding Orica Mile, then uh, wherever, the, wherever there are high occupancy hotels, we will reprice more. Uh, where the occupancy is not optimal, which is at you know, late 70s. We will look at first building the occupancy to that level and then repricing. So it's a step-by-step -step process. Last year, we increased prices. This year, we focused on increasing occupancy at those new prices. And going forward, now we will look at a combination of the two. Wherever there's very high occupancy, we reprice higher. Where the occupancy is not so high, we will first focus on building the occupancy levels and then repricing. But ultimately, if you ask me two years out, it will be our entire focus will be on repricing every year. Okay, all right. Uh, but what proportion of cost op optimization is probably already behind the company? And how much room do you have left going forward? So, you know, we have a certain level of fixed cost. Obviously, that level will increase with the operationalizing of Orica in Bombay. And those fixed costs are now... I would say subject to some minor increases due to inflation, more or less fixed, irrespective of the revenue we do. Our variable cost is roughly 25% of our revenue. So future growth in revenue, uh, my expectation is the flow through will be 75% of the revenue will go straight to the EBITDA. All right. And uh, what's the hotel opening pipeline for the remainder of this year then? So we expect to close the year uh, well, you know, when I look at it from a, uh, from a current perspective, we closed quarter two with 8,300, uh, no, we closed it at 8,760 rooms uh, with 95 hotels. My expectation is we would close the year with over 100 operational hotels, probably 105 operational hotels and over 10,000 rooms. All right, over 10,000 rooms and over 105 hotels by the end of this year from a little over 80 and uh, 8,700 odd rooms right now. Uh, what does that mean uh, for your balance sheet? What's the expected debt on the books by the end of this year? And when does the debt repayment schedule kick in? 
See, debt, we have now peaked debt because uh, we've opened Orica, which cost us a little over 900 crores. So my expectation is that going forward, every excluding this, this quarter, because we still have to pay some expenses of Orica, some capital expenses. My expectation is that from Q4 onwards, uh, quarter on quarter, there will be a reduction in debt. And we have already hit what is what we would consider the peak debt of this company. Okay. Any comments with regards to FI24, FI25 guidance bo based on uh, both your outlook on revenue as well as margins? Well, I said we will do about a 50% net EBITDA for, for this year. And next year with the addition of Oreca Mile, uh, excluding renovation, incremental renovation, certainly our net EBITDA should be north of 52, 53%. And we'll have to then downward adjust that for the incremental uh, renovations that we do beyond normal, because we are still doing a catch up on renovation because we did not do any renovation during the two years of COVID. So I would still say we would look at about 50% net EBITDA after the much larger investments we make next year too in renovation. Okay, all right. So we're going to leave it on that note. Thanks very much for joining in and speaking with us. So that's Lemon Tree. We need to take a short break, but uh, we'll put the focus on Coal India, which is one of the top gainers on the Nifty this afternoon after positive brokerage commentary. Stay tuned for that.